It's Clare versus Cork, the sequel. Saturday night hurling fever, grip Scrow Park. Amazingly, it's the sixth, sixth meeting of these teams. It's handled today by James McGrath, the Westmeath official. His uh, second All-Ireland hurling final replay. He was in charge, of course, last year as well. Now, the band haven't got off yet. And eventually, the referee just decides, throw the ball in and let's get on with it. And it is Cork who play from left to right in the first half, hoping to make a, a good early impression here. Park Cronin, the captain, coming out here, leaving it as far as Stephen McDonnell, across to the far wing. Coming up to pick it up is Connolly Hahn. Got on the point last week, well blocked down this time by the roving Conor McGrath. Does an immense amount of work for this team, meant to be at corner forward, but he's back helping out. Lee Hahn goes after him. McGrath hits that shot, but hits it just to the right. Worth a go, he probably felt. It would have been a huge boost for his team, but his work rate is immense. Incredible, a great block down there on Conor Lehan. Just watching here what's happening. Uh, Pat Connor has gone in centre back on Keane McCarthy. Pat Cronin now gone in full forward, and Pat Horgan has come out, and Brendan Bugler has picked him up. Brian Murphy, it looks like, has been given the job of going and picking up Podge Collins. We'll see how he fares on him this afternoon. Difficult man to contain. Coming out with this one is Pat Donnellan, their captain, hoping he'll be lifting the McCarthy Cup at the end of all of this. Driving forward, John Conlon looking over his shoulder here to see William Egan after him. Strikes it off his left and puts it over the bar. Opening point of the match scored by John Conlon. Staying yeah. just over a minute to produce here. Good individual work. Bouncing off the ground, then 45 metres out from the target. Off his left-hand side, avoided the hook of Egan and put it over the bar. Yeah, Ger, that's a great score. And interestingly, long puck out from Anthony Nash again. They have the win behind him, Cork. And again, the breaking ball won straight away there by Clare, by Conor Ryan, out to John Conlon, and a great score. Into the half forward line from this puck out, and uh, it's uh, enabled Pat O'Connor to go back, get away from his man who is Kean McCarthy, who's gone out to the wings as anticipated. In here as far as Colin Ryan. Clare settling down to the task immediately. In as far as the man they brought in for this, Shane O'Donnell, in place of Dara Conan, trying the shot. And that one has gone over the bar. Two attacks, two points. Joe, that's well, a great, sorry, Joe, great ball, diagonal ball across the field. Just O'Donnell inside in his own, took on Shane Reel, and a great score again, confidence to put it over the bar. This is a great start by Clare. Well, he'd be very, very pleased with that. It was interesting, I thought Patch Collins was going to be picked up by Shane O'Neill, but they've gone and switched back again. Puck out once again by Cork to try to win this one. And it breaks down here as far as Seamus Hahn, and he's driving it from 20 metres out, a point they've needed to settle down the teams. Two points to one, and as in the first match, Seamus Hahn, and he gets the first point for Cork in this game. Yeah, you saw Keane McCarthy under that, pulling very hard under the dropping ball, and uh, obviously that's something they worked on, that's why he's in there, and great ball picked up by Hannity. Referee calling across after we acknowledge Hannity's fine play there. Two players, Pat O'Connor has been called across, and Patrick Horgan as well. Remember, he uh, sent off Pat Horgan, this referee, before half-time in the Munster final against Limerick, and that was later rescinded. Two points to one then, clear leading. Pat Kelly's puck out. Wind holding it up a little bit. Wind back in court for the first time. It's a gentle breeze. Harnady once again, very effective. All the way in towards Park Run, who has moved into full forward. Challenged strongly, gets as far as Luca Farrell, trying to make inroads. Not succeeding immediately. Judiciously playing it out as far as Rock on McLaughlin. And McLaughlin puts it over the bar. And the teams are level. Level for the first time in this match. Three and a half minutes are gone. It's flying stuff here at Croke Park in this replayed final. Yeah, great work by Luca Farrell and uh, Larkin McLaughlin on his shoulder. But interestingly, as I said before the game, Pack run at full forward and they're going to be looking for a high ball in there. He broke that down and was picked up. And you can watch the Cork forwards much sharper on the breaking ball so far in the first few minutes. And Great Ian start. Dillon's on uh, Pack Cronin at full forward. He's gone across into full forward. Here's John Coughlin, second possession for him. Scored with his first one. It's going to drop short. O'Donnell's in there. Loves to score goals. He's got more goals than points. 3 2 is his tally in the championship this year. Brought it out here as far as Christopher Joyce. Challenge there by two Clare men, got it off his left-hand side and swings it into midfield, in towards Harnady once again. Jumping for it there with Conor Ryan, the uh, man of the match in the original game. Tony Kelly across the field over here. Conor O'Sullivan challenging, Conor McGrath, McGrath has it. Second time to get on the ball here in this match, put the first one wide and the second shot he hits and he hits it over the bar. Great point by Conor McGrath, his sheer industry rewarded here. He can be such a lethal predator, this fella. Showed his skills once again here, and Clare shoot back in front once more. 
Yeah, and Ger, what a start to the game. The pace is just incredible. Uh, every ball being fought for both sides, picking up great breaking ball. And Tony Kelly there again with a great ball into space. And you saw how quick uh, Conor McGrath turned again there, and a great score. Conor Ryan is picking up Harnity, just having a look around at the different matchups that they have here. Once again, it is uh, Donald in midfield, pursued here by a couple of court players. One of them is Daniel Carney. Can he catch up with him? What a run through the centre here. Across towards O'Donnell. This is the man they brought in because of his real goal threat. His fourth championship goal, justifying his selection. A goal in the sixth minute. What a boost this is. Well, Joe, what a, what a run by Pat Donnelly, first of all. But he shouldn't be able to walk up the centre like that, but a great hand pass and what a finish. No one hard into the net. And as you say, that's, that's psychologically, this is huge for Clare to get that goal so early. Cork trying to counter at the other end. Luca Farrell trying to pick it up. Repulsed, however, and David McInerney trying to get it out. Back in by Luca Farrell. Trying to back out by Donald O'Donovan. Back out here as far as Rock on McLaughlin. 30 metres out from goal. McInerney tries to force it out. Helped there by John Conlon. Conlon has it. Gets away from McLaughlin. Steals away. Back off his left hand side again. Now drives it. A good 70, 80 metres into the goalkeeper's hand. Could have done something better with that one, I think. That goal was a huge boost, however. 1-3 to 2 points. It's still Clare, and it's Tony Kelly now winning the free in. And everything has gone well for the banner. It is, Jerry, but, you know, it's open both sides. Cork could have broken onto a ball on the far side of the field. But you'd have to say there, look at, again, the tackling of Tony Kelly there. But here's Pat Donnelly, you know, the, the break down the middle. There was nobody in the centre-back position. He ran straight down the channel, showed great pace and a great goal. And that's what it means to Davy Fitzgerald and uh, Shorsha Bolfin there, his right-hand man on the sideline. His first free of the game, first of the match, going to be taken by Colin Ryan. 12 points against Cork the last day, 11 of those coming from freeze inside the 45-metre line, and a very, very good start here. And during the work rate of the clear forward, John Conlon was back in his own half-back line there. He took a wrong option, but look at the tackling when Cork tried to come out. Tony Kelly fought so hard for the ball, won the free, and Colin Ryan first scored today for him. Well, Clare, of course, imposed their physical might and ruthless determination on Cork the last day. Now what are Cork going to do about it? That puck out towards Park Cronin. He gets there well. Trying to link up here with a support player, it's William Egan, drives it in towards the goal area, bounces off Luca Farrell, collected back there well by Conor Ryan, driven back out here as far as Colm Galvin, Galvin trying to get away from Daniel Carney, and out over the sideline following that intense pressure, a line ball to Cork, who trailed by 1-4 to 2 points, seven and a half minutes into the match. Chris Joyce about to take this in his second, or is he? He's going to leave it, and the man who'll hit it in instead will be Daniel Carney. Very, very energetic player, Daniel Carney. Almost a miss hit there, and he gave it away to Colin Galvin. Gets onto it, Carney went in to try and make amends and get the block in, took a little bit of the heat out of that. Drops into the hands of uh, Conor O'Sullivan, helped out, and there was a foul there on Brian Murphy. And Brian Murphy is uh, feeling his hand there, and Tony Kelly is spoken to by the referee. Yeah, and as you were... Colin Galvin, a little bit casual on the ball, the two times he's got it, but a great block down, very brave there by Daniel Carney. And he got a kick in the head, totally accidental from Colin Galvin coming through that time. But it sure showed sheer commitment and bravery on Carney's part. And this looks like it's going to be a, a talk rather than a, a card eventually. For yeah, that might be a show back to earlier in the summer, you know, rather than giving a yellow card very early. And uh, Brian Murphy, as you say, Mark and Todd Collins, no ball has come in between them yet. And uh, Stephen McDonald out at centre back on. Uh, on, on t Tony Kelly but Tony Kelly just threw him away for that goal took him out to the wing and uh, he went with him and left the middle wide open for Pat Donlan that's and interesting, they brought the goalkeeper out Michael to take it, it's right on the middle line between the 265s but they've opted instead to try Pat Horgan, well it's well within his range Jenny, as we know yeah, I think Play they might have stolen 4 or 5 yards there from her who <laughs> originally given and brought it into his range 11 shots on the target the last day 10 points in all and he's got his first here. So 1-4 to 3 points, early stage in this replayed final. Pat Kelly pucks it out, puts the pressure on the cork half-backs, they have a big task on their hands. Colin Ryan, Kelly and Conlon, all very good players. Out it comes from defence, out as far as Conor O'Sullivan. Always keeps a very cool head and very often links up with his goalkeeper, Anthony Nash who knows what's coming and anticipates and drives it back away down the field towards Cronin, picked up here by McCarthy, Kean McCarthy.
swinging it off for his uh, left shoulder, but swinging it wide. Yeah, there's an opportunity. I think, Jerry, you get an idea of the wind there. You know, Anthony Nash has a great puck of the ball, but he right down to the 21 from his own line. And, you know, Keane McCarthy, I think that's a fault in his game. You know, he takes on shots. Pat Cronin was loose inside him. All he do was throw a little hand pass over the top there, and it was his handy score. And he went for, you know, a really 50 50 ball and pucked it wide. Pat Kelly pucking it out. Drop down there. And onto it quickly comes Conor McGrath. After him goes Seamus Harnady. In low, dangerously, in towards O'Donnell again. Into try and collect it is Shane O'Neill and he succeeds in his task but he's closed down intense pressure by the Clare forwards get it out as far as Brian Murphy Murphy away down there into the corner to Connolly Han a lot of work to do from here takes on Donald O'Donovan O'Donovan challenges him high loses him completely and Connolly Han has a shot and puts it over the bar brilliantly done by Lee Han all of a sudden there was an enormous amount of space in front of him he actually could have carried it another 20 meters but he had enough confidence in himself he backed himself from this angle here hit it over the bar brilliantly yeah, one four to four points Jerry had but that's a fantastic score you know Sh Shane O'Neill out in front of, of his man and uh, you know Brian Murphy up the wing and, and what a score by by uh, Conor Lehan and what a game Carr coming back into it again but here's Terry coming through and it's Conlon who was uh, blocking down Willie Megan's clearance and they managed to get it out of defence cork eventually out towards Lockall McLaughlin who'll be looking for a great deal more success from his efforts in midfield the first game seemed to almost pass him by there was a chop there and it's got to be a free in for 45 metres out this was where Lockall McLaughlin was trying to get the ball away and the uh, referee saw an illegal use of the stick so it's going to be another free for Clare and Colin Ryan yeah, great work by Podge Collins a great tackling again and uh, he won the ball and was held back and a handy free now for Colin Ryan so from 45 metres out straight in front of the posts should be an easy one and is for Colin Ryan from Newmarket on Fergus two from two for him one five for four points early stages yet but uh, some Clare fans already looking uh, like they think this could be their day, it may well be. Park out quickly towards Park Cronin as he pushed to the back. Cork fans thought so, Clare fans thought otherwise. Likewise, the referee. Here comes Colin Galvin from 65 metres out. Conor O'Sullivan comes across to try and cut it out. But well, that first touch has to be good because Conor McGrath is in immediately. He's got to support Clare as well. And there's another goal! And he's done it again! Amazingly, Shane O'Donnell with two in the opening 12 and a half minutes. Yeah, you'd have to say it's a great ball across, but, you know, Conor O'Sullivan normally so tidy made a mistake, but Conor McGrath still had a lot to do. But what a run, straight down the middle again, beautiful hand pass. And Shane O'Donnell, who wasn't in the team all week, comes in, two goals in the first 12 minutes of an All-Ireland final. What a dream for him. And they're huge scores for Clare, didn't score goals all year, and now they look like scoring when every time the ball goes in there. And he didn't get on the field, Michael, in the original match three weeks ago. But it's been a huge bonus for Clare to have him in there. And a wonderful decision by Davy Fitzgerald to select him at full forward. He's got that goal touch. They always say about O'Donnell, doesn't even think about anything else, just goes straight through. So two goals in the space of seven minutes have fairly well set this match up for Clare. Now, what will the uh, Cork response be? Patrick Horgan hitting it in, it's going to drop a bit short in there, bounces off Keane Dillon's hands, back to Park Kelly's goalkeeper, keeps a nice cool head, gets it back out as far as Pat O'Connor, slips it in as far as Colin Galvin, and they work it out of defence in measured, controlled fashion. Very enterprising play by Clare, down once again as far as O'Donnell, he's tormenting that Cork full back line. They get it out eventually, Cork, out eventually by Stephen McDonnell, whips on it, down into the inside forward line. Lee Han once again, can he prove the danger man for the Rebels here, he's got another point. Two shots, two points for Conor Lee Han, and uh, it's a two-goal game, 2-5 two to five points. Yeah, Conor Lee Han very sharp since the start of the game, maybe had a half chance there for a second, but he was forced out the field and put it over the bar. But again, it's Conor McGrath's run, and look at the little hand pass there. Ger you talked about Shane O'Donnell maybe making the runs and scoring goals, but they're just two finishes that he had to make from lads coming straight down the middle and opening up the Cork defence. And, you know, Cork are really going to have to tighten up back there. I think, uh, you know, the changes aren't working. Uh, Brian Murphy will maybe have to go centre-back and try to close down the half-back line a little bit. Clare have created ten chances so far, taken seven of those. Cork have created seven chances and taken five. They're trying to create an eighth one here now. Once again towards Luke O'Farrell, bounces away from him, and David McInerney is a very, very crafty cornerback today, rather than the number three on his back of his jersey. Solos too far, 
got a little bit too confident in himself. And Luca Farrell helped there by Lachlan McLaughlin robbing him. But great play here, comes coming across Donald O'Donovan. Up here as far as the midfielder, Colm Galvin. Swinging it diagonally across, should be Egan's, comes onto it swiftly. Solos forward, the man from Kilbrin into the inside forward line. Park Cronin there with Kean Dillon, who's lost his stick. And the referee says we're pushing, and it's got to be a free in. Yeah, it'll be interesting. He was definitely very... You know, he looked all eyes on the ball, and you know sometimes that wouldn't be given, but he was very close to him, maybe half up in his back. But... And they're bringing up the goalkeeper. Anthony Nash is on his way. Well, they're two goals down. As you can see, just over 15 minutes are gone. Cork's second free of the match. Yeah, it looks like Clare put in... It could be 12, 13 players going into the goals. <laughs> this is going to be worth having a look at. Here's Nash. And look at where all the Clare team are. You know, Jerry, you have to say, Clare six points up after 15 minutes, but Cork looked like they're going to get plenty of scores too. It's so open. It's not like a, an All-Ireland final. You know, it's, there's loads of room out there and anything can happen in this game. Well, if you were the Clare manager, what would you do? You'd bring everybody back, of course you would. Now, what can Anthony Nash do? Onto the 13 metre line, and he's got a goal! Somehow he squeezed it in! 16 minutes are gone, an amazing start to this final. 2-5 to 1-5. Five, five. Anthony Nash gets his third ever championship goal. Watch this, sailing it over the head there of Pat O'Connor and everybody else. There was no stopping it. Venomously struck. Look where he went to. Onto the 13 metre line. Bang! And all the goal is hurled inside. But Jared, the problem there is everybody is nearly leaving it to somebody else. Now he couldn't save that shot anyway. That is a rocket. And if that hit somebody, you know, I think you're, he's rising it into the 13 metre line. It's crazy, it's dangerous, but it's under the rules, he's well entitled to do it. Who will react to that score? It's clear they've got it next. John Conlon. He was being held. It's got to be a free in, and it's got to give a chance now to Colin Ryan to put another one over the bar and he's coming across to perform his task. And that's a brilliant catch by John Conlon after the goal, but just to go back to it, Ger, you know, you put too many lads on the line, who's responsible? There's, there's ten, there was 12 lads or something on the line there, nobody really knows who's going to go for it, but he couldn't save that shot. Did they have too many in there? Well, I think so, nobody knows really. If you have your three lads on the line, at least that's it, but, you know, they were hoping maybe to go low and hit somebody. I would like to get a belt of it. Certainly not. So Colin Ryan then to add to his points tally. He's got two so far from Freeze. And every time he comes up, you can more or less write it down. And he's got another one. Tremendous shooting. Well, Davy Fitzgerald a bit uh, anxious after the concession of that goal, but they got the next score, and that's important for him and for Clare. Encouragement, 2-6, 2 Anthony Nash pucking it towards the 45-metre line. There was a wild pull there. Down went Park Cronin. His marker is Keane Dillon. Gave away that last foul or free, which uh, led to the Nash goal. Let's watch here. Not a great deal in that, I have no, to say. No, no, both missed the ball, in my opinion. And Slight push, but uh, very, very little. Yeah, but you have to say, Park Cronin doing very well under the high balls. There's a couple of frees now come off, him and uh, he's broken a couple of balls, and that, that move is certainly working for Cork. So come, here comes Pat Horgan, man who is blessed with wonderful natural ability. That uh, last point he got the last day was absolutely sensational. And he is in form as well with the freeze, two from two for him. There's not much point in fouling with the likes of Colin Ryan for Clare and Patrick Horgan for Cork about. So a goal between them once again. Pat Kelly from Ina Kilnamona. Drops into the half back line of Cork. Coming out to collect it. Conor McGrath looked very lively in the match so far. Galvin composed. Drives it back in there. Two Cork players go for the one ball in between them. They've missed it. And O'Donnell's in for a hat trick. O'Donnell has got it. Horrible defending. Brilliant finishing by Shane O'Donnell. And there seems to be no way to stop him. He's got goals after 6 minutes, 13 minutes, and now 19 minutes of this match, and he's made it 3-6 to 1-6. That should have been defended better. There was nobody there when the ball was blocked down and knocked to O'Donnell, and he just bounced it in past Anthony Nash. Yeah, but you'd have to say there are a couple of things there. An absolutely lovely flick down by John Conlon, but Shane O'Neill caught completely ball-watching. But he still had a lot to do. Look at that for a finish. You know, just to improvise like that and throw it up and bat it into the net. You know, a lot of skill involved there, and, you know, John Conlon's little touchdown, great score.
When you think if Podge Collins had scored a goal with about six or seven minutes to go in the last match, we wouldn't be back here, I'm pretty certain. They couldn't get a goal that day. They've got three this afternoon in the opening 20 minutes. And clear lead. And Corker under pressure. And it's Conor O'Sullivan once again. Driving it in as far as Lockhorn McLaughlin. Needs an extra second on the ball. Claire's touch is faster, sharper. That time there was a foul on him, so it's got to be a free out. And Anthony Nash will come out of goal for Jimmy Barry Murphy's team. And uh, if he's coming out, you can be pretty certain he's going to see if he can put it over the bar from just inside his own 65-metre line. Yeah, and Jerry, your point there that Clare looks sharper, of course, and they do, and they're playing the ball. But still before that goal, I was just going to say to you, there's only a goal in it, and Cork would be delighted with it. But it just seems every time the ball goes in around their full back line, there's complete panic, and Clare looks so dangerous. And, and a little bit the same down the other end. I think Cork are actually picking up a lot of breaking ball. Like 1-6 after 20 minutes, a decent score as well. But Clare are just going to town up in their forward line at the moment. And Shane O'Donnell, three goals in the final in 20 minutes. Anthony Nash... Dropped in, comes back out towards Pat O'Connor, spoons it out, but Luke O'Farrell tried to intercept. Back in to help out was Harnady, in there as well as Patrick Horgan. Makes an angle for himself and puts it over the bar, the first he scored today from play. And now it's 3-6 uh, to 1-7. So, five points between the teams. But Cork can't afford to keep on giving away goals at one end, because they're only chipping in with points at the other. Yeah, not going to be enough. No, maybe not if it continues like that, but the Cork forwards are playing way better today than they did in the last day. There was a time in the last match where they had only one point from play for most of the first half. Pressure on Joyce here, sails over his head, didn't get it. He's marking Colin Ryan. And all of a sudden it's Tony Kelly who gets loose. Joyce gets across to him. And Kelly just doesn't need a second invitation. Lovely score from a wonderfully talented, gifted young hurler. He really has been a vibrant influence on uh, Clare Hurling this season. Lovely skill, wonderfully crafted point. Two between them again, two goals that is. Chris Joyce, first touch again, needed a second goal, then runs back into O'Donnell, and they've been forced back. Look at this. The welcoming committee of Clare has uh, started with the full forward line, essentially making that very awkward. Up into the air went Lee Han. He's doing well over there against Donald O'Donovan. That's not harsh enough now, both of them going for the ball, but the linesman has come in and given his verdict. Looks like uh, Cork are going to make uh, a change, and that's Stephen White who's going to come on in place of William Egan. So the first change made by Jimmy Barry Murphy and his selectors to bring in Stephen White now, for coming up for just his fourth championship match, 24-year-old from Ballygarvan. Off goes Egan. Yeah, you'd have to say John Conlon and Colin Ryan started very well, particularly under the puckouts. Colin Ryan, particularly down in front of us here, he's winning a lot of ball, just breaking it down with his hurl, and they're picking up the breaks, and a lot of scores coming off this side. Well, this is now inside his own 65-metre line. Has he got the distance here? He's certainly going for it. Oh, it's a beauty, an absolutely beautiful score. Colin Ryan with a fourth. There is no stopping him. He's, so, he's such an integral part of this team, Jerry. Like, under the puckouts, he's just breaking the ball. Someone is coming around and picking it up, and nearly all the scores have come from this wing here. Diagonal ball's coming up from breaking ball that he creates. In all the matches he's played against Cork this year, and this is match number six, he's got 48 points against the Rebels, and 38, by my calculation, have come from frees. There's a pretty clear message there. Don't do the fouling. Yeah, he doesn't, miss, he doesn't miss any. Referee's going to throw this in. Galvin against Daniel Carney. Picked up here by Galvin. Scampers away. Looking for McGrath. That's Connor McGrath. Connor O'Sullivan trying to read the flight of the ball and succeeding. He's had a tough opening quarter to this game. Back it comes here as far as Shane O'Neill. And Cork will now just be trying to hope that they can stay in touch as they did in the drawn final. The for the half-time break and give themselves a chance for the second 35 minutes. David McInerney's at the hand pass across here. It's short, intercepted by Horgan, and Horgan sees that one in the, over the end line and wide. Looked really dangerous for Clare. Yeah, he'd have to say very well defended. Pat Horgan right through, great shoulder there. He wasn't fouled, held up there by Pat Kelly and the ball goes wide. You just watch here. Brendan Bugler coming across here, just held him up, and Patrick Kelly held his ground there, stood up very, very well, and uh, 
danger averted. Great chance there for Cork. Seemed he was determined to use his stick on that. Could he have squeezed it in with his boot? Maybe dropped it on the boot, but easier said from up here. Yeah. Pa Kelly. Seven points between these teams. That's and Colin Ryan again. Just what I was in there, Ger knocking it down to himself, and away he goes again. Such a skillful player. Hand pass there was a little errant, but uh, he gets a chance to get it back again. McGrath wasn't anticipating. But one man who's always anticipating is Pat Donlan, giving tremendous leadership. In there as far as Shane O'Donnell. He's cut another one. He seems unstoppable. Good vision to pick out Conlon. And before Carney can arrive, can he get the chance in? He's been fouled, and it's going to be a free for 20 metres out. But they are playing around with the Cork defence there. They're causing major, major consternation. And Cork just do not seem to have the response. Well, Shane O'Donnell, look, he's not a big man. Great catch in front of Shane O'Neill again. They're playing lovely ball into him, but, you know, Shane O'Neill is one of the most accomplished defenders in the country over the last six or seven years, and Shane O'Donnell is just giving him a roast out there today. Shane O'Donnell is only 19 years of age. He's from Era Oog in Ennis, and uh, he is a UCC student, so he knows uh, a lot about Cork and Cork hurling. Must have been frustrated not to get a chance the last day. A young lad, under 21, medal winner already this year. Didn't play last year's team. And three goals in this year's replayed final. What a story. Colin Ryan's got his fifth point at free. 25 year old. Giving these Clare fans some wonderful early moments in this All Ireland final. Played in lovely sunshine. And it just shows you, Ger, probably two best forwards Clare have had all year, Tony Kelly and Podge Collins, really haven't seen the ball. It's just the way the game has been going so far. And uh, still they've put up uh, a score of 3-9 in the first 26 minutes. A long way to go. Here's Brendan Bogler here. And given his uh, debut in the championship by Tony Considine, the former manager. Played back in here, and they go for another one, but this one has gone wide. One of the uh, few wides. Just a second. Colin Ryan, the player was trying his luck from 65 metres out but going very nicely in the 27th minute Galvin again first to the ball Cork are going to need a lift from somewhere needing to stay in the match now getting up close to half time Brian Murphy one of those experienced campaigners up as far as Patrick Horgan in comes Connerly Hahn he's shown very prominently so far Back out here as far as Kean McCarthy. McCarthy's shot has gone away to the left-hand side, and that's the second shot he's tried, and uh, unfortunately, from his point of view, failed with his shooting. Jerry, a huge difference in the game is when, when a Claremont gets the ball, he's looking up, and he's, they're, they're have time on the ball, they're playing it in front of the forwards, but when a Cork defender gets the ball, he's under so much pressure from the Clare defenders, he's hitting the ball anywhere, they have to fight so hard for the ball up front, and that's what happened there. Eventually, good ball out, and Kean McCarthy again, the second poor wide he's had. Park Kelly... Dropping it towards John Connellan's wing. Comes back out here to lock on McLaughlin. Time to drive Cork forward now. Next five minutes important to pick off some scores. Inside towards Cronin, let it bounce off his hand. Back there together was Connor Ryan. Wisely playing the ball out towards Podge Collins. Podge Collins keeping the movement going. Pat Donnellan now reading the game brilliantly. Back in there towards O'Donnell, being marked by Shane O'Neill. O'Donnell again causing problems, trying to steal that ball away from Shane O'Neill. And the 27-year-old playing in his seventh championship season gets it forward eventually towards Luca Farrell. Helping it on here is Lock on McLaughlin. 45 metres out from the clear goal. Steadies himself, but didn't do enough steadying. And that was a horrible miss on his part. It's four wides now by Cork. Put under a lot of pressure, as you say, but that time was a, a golden opportunity for him to get a second point. Yeah, there were a couple of bad wides in a row, which, you know, if to put them over, keeps them in the game, but eight, eight points down now, and the fight maybe started to go out of Cork a little bit. You know, you'd feel they need a goal now just to reignite them. That's broken down once again towards Kean McCarthy. Helped on here by Stephen McDonald, fired in there towards Park Cronin, and almost seemed to lose his footing, being marked by Kean Dillon. The sweeper there at the back, effectively, is David McInerney, reading it like an old master and then playing it down the field here cut out this time by the substitute Stephen White and White knocks this one in towards Luke O'Farrell but too near the goalkeeper it's a hit and hope one the more measured more creative play is coming from Clare and every time they take the ball down into Cork's attack you feel something could happen and it might happen here again once more it's, Tony, it's uh, Colin Ryan Tony Kelly trying to help him out and Cork are just defending now for dear life and getting the ball away and looking for some respite. And what can uh, JBM and the selection committee do? Tough phase in the game now for them. 
haven't scored for over eight and a half minutes. Looks worried. Colin Ryan to hit this one. Almost looks calm and composed. Broken down here well. This time it's Conor O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan again in towards Park Rowan. It's one on one in there until the reinforcements arrive, and that's Seamus Harnady. Harnady slings it over his right shoulder and puts it over the bar. He's a really good, gallant young player, playing in just his sixth championship match, continuing to mature and to grow as a player. Helped out there by Park Cronin, down as far as Harnady. He had an immense amount of work to do, made an angle for himself, did well, 3-9 to 1-8. Yeah, lovely side step, and he's had a great summer, you know, burst on the scene, and uh, they're, still, look, they're going very much route one, Corkman to get the chance in on top of uh, Park Cronin. He hasn't really caught any clean ball, but he is breaking some balls and a few scores coming after. So seven points B between them once again. Both trying to close the gap. Clare trying to deny them, and Tony Kelly slipping the hand pass out here to Galvin. Slips on the ground, taking it up here is Chris Joyce. In as far as Luke O'Farrell, trying to win his battle there with David McInerney. Helped out here by Lorcan McLaughlin. In there as far as Park Crone has spent the entire match playing it full forward. Looks to put this one inside the left-hand upright, just half a metre wide, I would say. The fans behind the goal think it was in. They're looking for a Hawkeye, and Hawkeye is going to be used. So was it in? The fans behind the goal thought it was. And the referee, James McGrath, deciding that uh, technical help is needed. What do you think? Yeah, I think uh, Jimmy Barry was right on line. I thought it might be over the bar, it might have squeezed in, but my so eyesight's not as good it's as it in. used to be. It looks to be in. Let's wait for confirmation. A point from Park Roman, his first of the game. Yeah, Jerry, I just feel the last couple of minutes clear have maybe got a little bit, uh, you know, sloppy on the ball. They're, they're uh, maybe just got a bit casual for the last few minutes. The last ball that Colin Ryan got it, Conor McGrath was free down the wing. He didn't give the ball. And, you know, if Carton pick off another point or two before half time, they'll be happy enough. Kim McCarthy, back it comes here. Conor O'Sullivan, just about reaches Harnady. Inside towards Park Cronin again. Breaks it down, Dylan having a busy time of it now against Park Cronin. Ball came back out, waiting, and the referee again has blown his whistle. Foul on Cronin, he's decided, and it's got to be a free in. Clare are questioning it. Well, the point is at this stage, but it's uh, got to mean a free, which Pat Horgan will presumably take. Came into the back of him here. I think it was clumsy and awkward, it, but it was not more, necessarily a foul. Well, well, that's three frees, I think, that Pat Cronin has won, and you'd have to say the three of them were very marginal, they're 50 50. And, uh, you know, Cork have got the benefit of, the t of them, and, you know, all of a sudden, like, the gap is closing again, and you have to say it's a bit like elastic, Cork sticking in the game and staying with Clare when Clare are doing most of the hurling. Well, they've got quality and skills, this Cork team, no question of doubt about that. When you get to an all Ireland final, you have to be a very, very good team of players, but they've got great character, immense fighting ability as well, which has endeared them to the fans. Pat Horgan to take this, and Pat Horgan knocks it over the bar. He's got four... Three of the four have come from freeze, and it's 3 9 to 1 10, or in points, 18 points to 13. Two minutes to go to half time. Hey, no, Joe, we're talking about the sweeper system all year. Clear rate points up a couple of minutes ago, and uh, it's down to five. Would you not bring back the sweeper maybe and just defend your lead and tag on a few points? I know it's a long way out with a half to go, but. I think David Fitzgerald is concerned that Cork have the players who could shoot from outside, as it were, from around 45 metres and shoot with accuracy. It's one of the reasons I think he hasn't necessarily gone for it, yeah. but maybe he will. It's going to be a free which uh, Anthony Nash will come and take. Out to left half back he will go. And Stephen White will leave it there for him. Yeah, and you have to remember Cork playing with a nice little bit of a breeze. It's not very strong, but it is certainly fair from Cork in the first half. Two goals and five points already scored in this year's championship by the goalkeeper. Comes again. Dropped in there dangerously, well batted out by the Clare defence this time, out as far as Brendan Bugler, aware that he could be hooped and challenged, Harnady was the last one, and he's left it behind, Hogan's got it, he's stolen it away, and he put it over the bar. Well, a wonderful bit of pinching that time by Pat Hogan, when that ball came out, Clare looked to have it, it was Bugler who was making his way out, then dispossessed there, left it behind after the ball was intercepted and over the bar. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 
no great uh, argument from the Clare players even I felt maybe he was fouled coming out there Daniel Carney came in a little bit high uh, but uh, only four points in it now again one minute of added time being played which means we've got about uh, another 190 seconds still to go four points between the teams where it was eight not all that terribly long ago it's been some first half eight nearly nine minutes since Clare scored Colin Ryan hoping that Clare will get the last point of this first half, just to stamp their absolute authority on it. It's stolen again. Brian Murphy this time, nipping in. The 31-year-old got to that, didn't get a free after that. The referee allowed it to develop and continue. It comes out to Patch Collins, and Patch Collins trying to get space for himself. Clare wanted to finish with a score, and Clare people thought there was a foul there on Collins, which wasn't given, and it comes back as far as Anthony Nash. And both sets of supporters are rather puzzled by some of the decisions. But out it comes anyway, out of defence. Brilliantly caught there by Conor Ryan. Trying to feed it to a colleague here. Well into stoppage time. Just a few seconds remaining in this first half. Cork have it back. And it's Kim McCarthy once again. Back in there. Read superbly by Pat O'Connor. The highly durable left half back. Then there as far as Brendan Bogler is switched across. Ryan once again, that's Connor Ryan. Into the inside forwards. Shane O'Neill determined he was going to win the next ball. But he's left his man behind. And here comes uh, O'Donnell. He's got three goals. Can he possibly get four before half-time? Closed down well by the Cork defenders this time. Takes two. Shane O'Neill helped out. And then Connor O'Sullivan came across. Got it. Knocked the ball away. The referee has blown his whistle, I think. And it's uh, half-time at Croke Park. The referee signalling that that is it for the opening half. A half where the name of Shane O'Donnell pretty much rings around the stadium here. Goals after six minutes, 13 minutes and 19 minutes. A response by Anthony Nash, a goal from a 20-metre free. An absolute uh, blaster after 16 minutes of play. There's so much to talk about at half-time. Who's going to do the business in the second half? Half-time score, it's Clare. Three goals and nine points. Cork, one goal and 11. Michael and the panel have plenty to dwell on. We'll be doing all of that right after this. Thank you, Michael. Well, that means that Cork have now used, of course, two of their possible substitutions. And the uh, Cork medical officer was telling me that his son, Brian, is one of those all around the globe watching today. He's in Sydney. And a friend in uh, London, Catherine Holhan, also watching. Hope you're all enjoying it. You are if you're from Clare, you can be sure, because they're four ahead. Eight points up after 25 minutes. Now, who's going to get the next score in this match? It's knock on McLaughlin straight away and challenged high there. Challenged by uh, John Conlon, I think, and it's uh, going to be a free for Cork. And they've brought Patrick Horgan all the way out to midfield to take this. Yeah, Jerry, very early in the second half, but a huge, you know, really huge free now. Like, Claire, Claire were eight points up. If Pat Horgan scores this, it's back to three. And Just uh, an indication great, of the breeze. It's not that terribly strong. No, I think it might have died a little bit, but uh, you know, Pat Horgan very much said to, to Anthony Nash that he was coming out to take it. But as I said, eight points will be down to three if he puts this over, and that's some comeback again by Cork. John Conlon gets the yellow card for that foul straight at the second half. And Horgan, who got five points in the first half, tries his luck with this one. It was uh, a fair distance out. He's missed it anyway, put it away to the right. First wide of the second half of the fifth in all for Cork. Cork hoping now to try and up their physical approach in the second half, you could be certain. But it was Clare who were the dominant force throughout most of the first half and should be further ahead. That yellow card for John Conlon then, so he has to be careful. In midfield, Daniel Carney loses it and out comes Punch Collins, feeding it here as far as Tony Kelly, right on the sideline. Trying to get loose here, and he does so, succeeds brilliantly. Got a lovely bit of force behind that. Brilliant accuracy. He's some player. Two points for Kelly, and Clare have got the first score of the second down. Yeah, Jared, that's an incredible score. Look, on the sideline, not on three cork men around him, and he cuts back inside. And there's very, very few players in the game could take a score like that. What a player for a 19-year-old. Well, they've got a crop of wonderfully talented young players. And the 21 champions, 09 and 11. 12 and uh, 13, of course, as well. That's Kian Dillon put under pressure. Needs a bit of help. And Pat Donnellan playing like a wise old head. He's only 28 years of age with a lot of experience. Conor O'Sullivan now trying to pick out the perfect pass all the way down towards the full forward line. It's Morgan who got it, balanced it beautifully, and he has fouled, and it's going to be a free in, and this should go over and uh, be Cork's first score of the second half and put. 
platform between them again, or are they going to think about the goalkeeper? Are they thinking about Nash? That's the big cheer you can hear in the background. Anything on the 20-metre line are close to it now at this stage. They're thinking about it, but they've told him to go back. He was on his way out. Yeah, but, Jerry, just before that, the piece of skill by Pat Horgan there, that ball was coming down out of the, out of the clouds. Great first touch, and uh, brought it in, and he was trying to bring the ball onto the 21-yard free for the, for, for the free, and called up Anthony Nash, but the referee brought it back a couple of yards, and he just tapped it over the bar. He's uh, done exactly that. So first is the second half for him and for Cork. Uh, six points for... Pat Horgan and now there's got to be another change and the familiar figure of Tom Kenny has got to come on to try and maybe add a steadying influence so off goes Daniel Carney he was a real star in the draw match not as prominent today and Kenny comes on as a direct replacement and Kenny's gone into midfield 31 year old 53 championship appearances in all for him a very experienced man, the most experienced of the court team in there now. Lockhart McLaughlin hand passes it back and almost puts Conor O'Sullivan in difficulty. And they play around to try and get themselves out of trouble. And they succeed with Shane O'Neill. Very determined burst out of the back there. In over the head of Conor Lee Han, Gathered up well by David McInerney for Clare. Back into the heart of the court defence again. Stephen MacDonald back down. Oh, what a catch that is, brilliantly taken by Conor Ryan. One of the best catches of the match so far. Batted back out again. Tom Kenny back out into the middle, out as far as Brendan Bogley here. Pursued by Lorcan McLaughlin. Batted back out here, it's uh, Brian Murphy who's now back there in that cork full back line, helping out Conor O'Sullivan. Murphy's there, Shane O'Neill and Conor O'Sullivan. That's the makeup really of the Corkville back line for the second half. O'Donnell's gone out into the half forward, half back line. Meanwhile, Stephen Moylan hits it and puts it over the bar. Will he be the star of this match? His dad was the man of the match in the 1976 All Ireland final, Cork against Wexford, and he's come on as a sub at half time and he's put it over. Yeah, lovely tidy score. Here's Conor Ryan just before that fantastic catch, which I have to say the Cork backs. In the last 15 minutes, really have got on top of the clear forwards. Uh, they're cleaning up, they're uh, picking up all the breaking ball, and they're doing very, very well. And Cork are really back in this game now with every chance. Once again, it is Conor O'Sullivan. Again, he looks around to try and lay it off. It's his first instinct to always retain the possession, not just give it away, helter skelter downfield. Sometimes perhaps it's a better option, but he's very careful and very cautious about how he uses possession. That's Pat O'Connor trying to get the ball out of defence for Clare. One back by Kean McCarthy, looking for a better second half now. Into space here. Kean Dillon wins the race. Doesn't get the ball, however. Pat, Patrick Cronin is uh, there alongside him. A little pile up of bodies. Finally went down, and the referee has given Cork the free, and you can judge by the booing of the Clare fans. They don't agree with it one little bit. And David Fitzgerald wants to add his uh, weight as well to the argument that it shouldn't have been a free there and the ball has been moved in now and the referee is telling Davy Fitz off you go there so James McGrath not endearing himself to David Fitzgerald the Clare manager who's seen his team concede a free and now is in a better scoring position for Pat Horgan to hit six so far for him the margin's three points at this stage remember it was four at the break it was one at eight at one stage during the first half he should be able to get it back down to two here and it's anybody's match in spite of the fact that Clare got three goals from Shane O'Donnell in the first half he's taking a long time over it Pat Horgan giving himself every opportunity and putting it over the bar some final 310 to 140 but this was uh, very controversial and David Fitzgerald certainly felt that the bodies just fell over there yeah absolutely but you know he's saying there David three frees but he has to keep the head now the reality is Clare were eight points up and they're relaxed Cork have come back to two points they're right back in this game and Clare need now to get a grip somewhere around the middle of the field but Cork hurling all, doing all the hurling at home a great first touch by Colin Ryan absolutely brilliantly done back it comes as far as the midfielder Colin Galvin this would be a score to try and settle them down he doesn't get it puts it wide and that is uh, five wides now for Clare, their first of the second half, 3.10 to 114. Louis Mulqueen there, one of the selectors having a word with uh, Davy Fitzgerald. Well, he has a terrific ability, Fitzgerald, to blend the skills of a talented group into what he hopes will be a winning All-Ireland combination. A lot of work to do yet. They had the lead, they still have it, and Kean McCarthy tried to do something about it for Cork, but cut out brilliantly, stopped at the pass, really, by David McInerney, and then trying to pick out a colleague, but the 
ball across to Bald Bugler, just a little bit too long. Line ball to Cork. Clare getting a little bit edgy and frustrated in their approach at this stage. Could be playing into Cork's hands. Yeah, and Jeremy talked about the tackling of the Cork forwards in the first, or the Clare forwards in the first half of the Cork forwards. They are great tackling coming out there. David McInerney held up and he was forced really to put the ball out over the line. It's going to be uh, Kian McCarthy who's going to take it. Taking his dad, of course, won two Ireland medals in the one year. Big one in. Pat O'Connor tried to reach for it. Everybody trying to get to it. Runs away and eventually David McInerney emerges with possession. What a brilliant first season he's had at championship level. All the way through the centre here. Shane O'Neill, the other number three. Happy to see that one picked up by Conor O'Sullivan. Good combined play in the end. And now Stephen McDonald in the half-back line. Kept in play here by Kean McCarthy. Diagonally in there. Putting the pressure back on the Clare backs in this All Ireland final replay. Coming to you live from Croke Park. In there is Seamus Hardity. Can't quite get to it. Again, it's Kean Dillon showing his strength and his resolution, but stymied in his actions to try and get the ball away. Coming out there was Moylan. In came McLaughlin, and that's put uh, into the goalkeeper. And Park Kelly drives it a mile, the proverbial mile, putting the pressure back on. Stephen McDonald collects. Tony Kelly comes into challenge. McDonald's away. He's got a support player if he needs him. Joyce was looking for it. It was just yards away from him. In came the clear backs. McGrath back there acting as a, an auxiliary half back. Challenge once again there by Stephen Moylan. Helter Skelter stuff. And in the end, the referee says too many steps were taken and he's given the free against Clare. And so Cork have a chance of getting another score. Remember, they're two behind. Yeah, absolutely. Huge work by Conor McGrath, first of all, and then the referee judges him to take too many steps. So, uh, Clare and Cork really all the momentum with him now. What a comeback. Game looked over earlier on in the first half, and now there's only a point in the game, is there? Pat Horgan puts over another one. Eight points for Patrick Horgan. 310 to 115 means in points. Clare 19, Cork 18. Some comeback. He will be delighted. Side showing tremendous character. Clare with just one point so far in the second half, which is nearly ten minutes in. Cork, by comparison, have scored four. And they come again. Clare trying to deny them. Brendan Bugner, his side, realising they need a point. They need a score to settle them down. And Galvin's on his shoulder. Kenny's after Galvin. Galvin trying to get in, Kenny trying to stop him, eventually they run out of road, Shane O'Neill there, Galvin trying to get it back, Brian Murphy has it right on his own end line, Hersey's fly away, out it comes here as far as Shane O'Neill, slipping the hand pass down, McLaughlin coming on to it, holds his feet, retains his balance and control, but gives it away then in the end with that pass as far as Shane Mc Conor McGrath, and Conor McGrath drops it in, it should be Nash's, and it is, and there's no pressure on him whatsoever, and Anthony Nash, the teacher in Mitchellstown CBS, playing in his 12th championship game, belts it away downfield, it's broken down here as far as Seamus Harnady, from Gertrude, tries to get it in, stopped there by Brendan Bugler, what a turn by Bugler to get it away, the Whitegate man drives it in, it's stopped here by Conor O'Sullivan, what a passage of play, in the end the referee says too many steps taken, he's been severe on that in the last couple of minutes here, well, this I time ruling against Paul. I think some of the decisions in the last few minutes, First of all, Seamus Herndon there, he took the head off Brendan Bugler coming out there. It should have been a free where the ball landed. And then Conor O'Sullivan, I think it was making up for maybe not giving the free. Great play, to play here by Conor O'Sullivan. Yeah, he did maybe take a step or two in fairness to the ref, but it should have been a free in the first place. And Seamus Herndon should be in the book for that tackle. Colin Ryan is ready to take it. Harnady got away with the foul. And so there can be two between them again. Oh, he's put it off the post. But it almost came for Patch Collins. Might come yet. O'Donnell, the goal scorer in the first half, all three goals scored by him. Cork got away with it, it's a miss by Colin Ryan, and there's still just a one-point game here, and an absolute thriller at Croke Park. A way out of defence there by Stephen McDonald for Cork. Kean Dillon has it stolen from him. Taken up here once again by Park Cronin, slipping the hand pass there as far as Harnady. Back to Tom Kenny again, and the veteran holds possession, plays it back as far as McDonald. They tried to hold on and nurse the ball here and hold on to it and get it into a scoring position for Patrick Horgan and Horgan has put it wide and he's furious with himself 
Yeah, with the pressure getting the both teams, Gerard Colin Ryan, you know, we said he doesn't miss freeze and missed one straight in front of the goals there. And then Pat Horgan, you'd, you know, you'd have any, you'd bet the last few quid in your pocket, he'd stick that over the bar and he missed an easy chance. But well, what a game of hurling, Joe! What an All Ireland final! You know, tear three goals in the first 15 minutes. Shane O'Donnell, eight points up, and next thing Cork looked beaten and they come back now a point in it at anybody's game. But they would have to say all the momentum with Cork at the moment. It looked like they were getting Derek Conan up out of the subs bench there. 11 minutes since Clare scored, had one off the post as you saw from that free. Conor McGrath now turning beautifully, losing possession. Referee not too far away, so it all is perfectly legitimate. It says play on. It's stolen away from you. Out of defence it comes. Back once again come Clare to try and get it, but Horgan wins that battle, a little flick there from Harnady. Horgan tries to get it again, stopped there by David McInerney, number three for Clare, trying to win possession. 45 metres from his own end line, he's got it, and he was being held back and he's won the free. Tremendous play, tremendous work by David McInerney from Tulla, just 20 years of age. Here he is, and he was caught as he was coming out here. Just and a little uh, hold back there by Seamus Harnady, who worked so hard. And, you know, Donald Donovan, who scored a winning point, I don't think we've seen him on the ball today, and the last day, he, you know, he was on the ball all over the place in the first half and scored a winning point. And it's just that type of game, it's helter-skelter, it's all over the place. And it's going to be uh, Colin Ryan now. You may remember in the draw match three weeks ago, he missed two frees, but then he showed what a great nerve he had. He stayed with the frees and he got a few more after that, and he was very much the hero. 11-pointed frees, 12 points well, in all his I tally. I think Shane O'Donnell could be going off here, he seems to be limping yes. a little bit. And... I think you're right. Shane O'Donnell is... Uh, and Derek Holden is only warming up, he hasn't even put his helmet on yet, he's still in a bib there, so... The they're bringing on there is number 21, and that's Fergal Lynch. So the uh, 30, it's a blood sub, we understand. So this free is taken short. Now clever with... clever play by Claire, they're trying to vary it, maybe too clever. Tony Kelly couldn't take it, was he anticipating? Stephen MacDonald got it, and in the end, the referee decides that Claire committed the foul. And Tony Kelly, I think, just feeling the frustration of all of this. He's only 19 years of age. I'm not sure that was such a very wonderful idea, that last free. No, but normally his first touch is so good, and he'll argue he just held him up there. You know, you'd wonder what was the free for. He didn't seem to do anything. But you have to say Steve McDonald having a fantastic second half. He's really set the tone for Park. Second guessing why frees are awarded is uh, not exactly something we're able to do from here. Anyway, play is going to continue, and the referee is satisfied. It'll be a cork free from out there where that offence occurred. Clare still leading by a point. And now we have uh, some 20 minutes left in this final. There would be extra time, by the way. Huge one in. Dropped down there into the teeth of that clear defence. They tried to get it out here. It's McInerney who's uh, trying to roll it up. It's Bogler who's got it, and Bogler is the one who has fouled. Fouled earlier on when he got the ball away. That's uh, Clare's second free of the second half they've been awarded. Cork have been awarded five, incidentally. Because they made a big issue, as it often happens after major matches, uh, how many frees did one team and the other team not get? Yeah, um, I think a little bit of confusion with some of the frees on both sides, but usually the balance out, but, you know, certainly some of them look a bit soft. He's back on. Three goal hero from the first half, and Fergal Lynch, school, t school teacher from Quinn, is the one who uh, makes way. He was just a, a blood substitute, but he may get a chance later on to come on. We're going to see number 23 coming on, and 23 is Cahill McInerney. Dropped in there dangerously, bounces awkwardly, picked up by Christopher Joyce. Joyce with O'Donnell after him, helped out here by Stephen McDonnell, the uh, court player. Onto it comes Tom Kelly again, slipping it low down in here. Now, that time there appeared to be a nudge. Park Ronan went down, looks at the referee pleadingly. So, I have to say, it's been happening plenty of times in the past, but he has got some freeze. I think again, he slipped. He slipped didn't I he? think he slipped there. There was very little contact, and that's a yellow card. I think that's for persistent fouling, but for Keen Dillon, Dillon there. And like, that's four frees now that Pat Horgan has, has won, and uh, certainly that one looked. Very, very soft. But you yeah, have to say, Jared Clare have scored one point in the second half so far. You know, Cork have have, have done all the hurling. Clare, I think, just got a grip in the last five minutes to stop the rot a little bit, but certainly you need to say they need a score or two now just to really settle them. So many young players and they seem to be losing their nerve. 
So nine, or is it nine points? Yes, it is. Clear of pleading that that one was wide. Nine points, and the teams have drawn level. Wonderful shooting by Patrick Horgan. Great comeback by Cork in the second half. Clare frustrated and annoyed by a number of the frees that have been given against their side. And as Michael was saying, they've only scored one point in nearly 18 minutes of the second half so far. Now, can they prevent a collapse here? Teams level. Brian Murphy. It's anybody's game. Chris Joyce sets off. Pursued here by Podge Collins. Everybody's after him, still managed to get it in as far as Cronin against Kean Dillon, trying to flick the ball up here. Dillon's on yellow, back it comes here towards Harnady once more, over his left shoulder, it's going to drop well short and uh, well wide of the target anyway, and Pa Kelly can begin the counter-offensive here. Tony Kelly, big one in towards Shane O'Donnell, gets away from Shane O'Neill. On to it he comes, threatens danger, and kneels on the ground, and O'Donnell composes himself and fires it up and over the bar. Three goals and two points now for Shane O'Donnell, the youngster from Era Oog. And it means Clare go back in front again. And yeah. it's uh, Clare's first score since the uh, 37th minute. And, you know, if a point can be worth more than a point, it can be, but that's a huge score for Clare, you know, to really... First bit direct hurl in the second half, and O'Donnell won the ball well and a great score. Looked like he was going away from him, knocked back, come Cork and come on Lehan. Lehan shortens the grip in the second, puts it over the bar, and he, no he doesn't, he's put it wide. Cork fans were cheering, he's put it wide, he missed it. And Clare remain in front by 20 points to 19, or 3.11 to 1.16. Yeah, so great catch. A fourth, a seventh wide for Cork. Sorry, Jarvis, but great catch by Conor Lehan. And I thought he was going to head for the goals there, you know, with the pace he has. And he just said he tapped it over the bar and a bit casual and hit it wide. So on comes number 23 for Cork. And that is Cahill Nocton. And it's uh, Kean McCarthy is going off. So Jimmy Barry Murphy ringing the changes here. It'll be a totally different style of approach now. Cahill Nocton, of course, will try and get the ball and run at that clear defence and create scoring opportunities. And there the uh, court player Stephen Moylan saying he was chopped down, appealing to the referee. Doesn't appear he's going to get anything. Physio in there quickly to have a look at him there, Declan O'Sullivan, feeling his hands still. Play continues, comes in towards Cahill McInerney, the player substitute, helped out by Conor McGrath, trying to steal inside. No Moylan's after him. Right across towards John Connell, who got the first point of this final. And who now could get the latest. And he has. And now that might certainly begin to settle things down. O'Donnell getting one, O'Connell getting one. And now there are two between them. Yeah, and a tactic of players earlier, the quick line ball. I think uh, Stephen Wilde did get a nice tap in the elbow there from John Connell going for that line ball. But a great ball across the field there from Conor McGrath, who I think has been absolutely fantastic for Clare. And John Connell turns it over the bar. Big one straight down the centre. Great catch by Harnady. And on as far as Nocton. Cahill Nocton has two or three players around him. One of them is Donnellan. Off he goes. 21 minutes into the second half. Little block on it. Goalkeeper comes out here. And Pa Kelly can take control and start all over again. And belt it down towards John Conlon. Clare by two at this critical stage of the All-Ireland final replay. Repulsed. Out it comes as far as uh, the Cork midfielder. And away it goes to Tom Kenny, and Kenny hits it down off the post. And Pa Kelly comes, gathers, and plays it away. Both sides have hit a post during this match. There was a push in the back. Stephen White this time appeared to be the uh, guilty party against John Conlon. And there's Davey Fitzgerald in there to try and make the referee... There's no argument there, Joe, but a great goalkeeping by Pa Kelly. You can see there the nudge clearly on the back. But I was watching Pat Kelly when that ball was coming in, it was turning in the wind and he never took his eye off it as if he anticipated hitting the post and very, very good goalkeeping. From the shot by Tom Kenny. Kenny looking for a long-range point during his illustrious career. He scored just one goal, the midfielder Tom Kenny, and that was uh, against Wexford back in 2004. Again, a little chat between David Fitzgerald and Louis Mulqueen, considering further changes maybe. This is Clare's seventh free. And it's taken here by Colin Ryan. And Colin Ryan 
with this second half free has put it away to the right and it's a missed opportunity to stretch the lead even more two points between the teams 57 minutes in and Jared, that's two frees in the second half you know that's a very difficult chance but with that wind he has the distance and he missed the handier one earlier on and you know they could be vital to come to the end of the game who can put in the big finish now advantage clear at this stage they got it back again with Podge Collins standing on his own 65 meter line stopped by Stephen MacDonald much happier out around the half back and he's got on a lot of ball got in a lot of interventions but it's stolen away back there again and Conor McGraw once more shows his raiding ability they try to stop him Stephen White's number 20 collides in on top of him no question about the free in this time and a chance to put three points between the teams this was a great run he's had a powerful game like his work rate is unbelievable he'd, he'd obviously be that's, that's a foul obviously by uh, Stephen White but he's, wor he's obviously more dangerous close to the goals but the role he plays for Clare he covers an awful lot of ground out the field he's tackling he's carrying the ball and he gets a chance and again um, vital and a great tackling by John Conlon there as well before that on, on uh, Stephen McDonnell and took possession of him so after that foul after that yellow card on Stephen White it's Colin Ryan who's missed a couple. Now this from 20 metres out is pretty straightforward and he puts it over. First point he's put over in the second half. Six points in all. Three points between them. That man and that little fellow there, all very, very happy, ready to celebrate. Will it be a banner victory? They lead by three. And Claire have made a change and uh, Nicky O'Connell is coming on. Number 20 and it's Podge Collins who hasn't scored today. Hasn't been terribly involved, is the one who goes off. Here's a chance. Lihan stopped. Three men ready for it. Hannity scores. First ever championship goal for Seamus Hannity coming in the 60th minute. And so with 10 minutes to go in the All Ireland final, the teams are level once again. Look at the number of players waiting for it. And Hardity was the one who availed of the opportunity after such good work by Conor Lehan. Hit that one, came back off the defender and buried in the back of Park Kelly's net. I'd have to say, lovely play by Conor Lehan. Great first touch and a great save then, first of all. But Hardity has had a fantastic match for Park. His work rate and his application all day has been immense. He's 1 2 now on the board. And now. But draw a match again after there 60 have been minutes. Some fantastic performance. There's no separate from these two teams. These sides, Unbelievable really. match again, this, again today. Absolutely. Out they come once more. Hannity waits, takes it up across here. Moylan's looking for it. Can't get to it. That's a fabulous catch by Donald O'Donovan. You were saying you weren't seeing an awful lot of him. Well, there he goes. Stephen Moylan from Douglas is after him. He hooks him. Again, it's Donald O'Donovan, the Clonlara player. Slipped inside here, in as far as Cahill McInerney in this thrilling match. Back towards Colin Ryan, elegantly striking it, but inaccurately so as well. And a missed opportunity, and another one has gone a begging. It stays at 3.13 for Clare, 2.16 for Cork. 22 points apiece, we got 10 minutes to go. Who's going to win it? Well, I would like to call it now, Joe, but some comeback by Cork, you know, you'd have to say they had the momentum. Then Clare steady the shift, got a couple of points up, and, or three points up, and then the goal again from Cork is huge at this stage. This is a super collapse here by Kian Dillon. Collected it beautifully, flights it forward here towards Cahill McInerney. In goes Conor O'Sullivan, but emerging from it is Conor McGrath. And he means danger, he's got a player over. He buries it in the back of the court net. Conor McGrath, 62 minutes are gone. That could be the goal that will drive Clare forward to collect the Liam McCarthy Cup. It was poor defending, but there was no denying the quality and the run and the strike of Conor McGrath. His fourth goal in championship hurling, his third this season. 4-13 to 2-16, three points between them. And Claire coming in, and Tony Kelly takes off. Kenny's after him, can't get to him. Kelly tries to knock it over the bar and succeeds. Three for him. Another one for Clare, they lead by four, and there are only eight minutes to go. Well, there, there are two scores, the likes of, you know, as good as you'll ever see in an Ireland final. The first, the Tony Kelly here again now, like from the halfway line on the run on his right side, I don't think that's his good side, he, left or right makes no difference, but the goal before that, you know, maybe a little bit of poor defending. 
but the skill level, the speed, the work rate of that man, and then to stick it up in the roof of the net under that pressure in an Ireland final is one of the greatest goals I've ever seen in a final. But Cork will not give up, and Tom Kenny just hooped there by Pat Donnellan. And put him off completely, and Donnellan was punching the air as well he might. Well, he offers poise and controls leadership for this Clare team. He's Davy Fitz out there in the park, really, in a way, in so many ways, fired up. Now, can he lead his team over the remaining seven and a half minutes to collect the cup? Cork will have their own answer to that. Will they offer a positive response? They've been terrific up to now. They've kept on coming back. That time, it's Lorcan McLaughlin down injured. And they have, Jared. That's the huge thing about this Cork team. You know, the last day... They had no right to be in the game. They stayed plugging away, and today they looked you know, eight points down to come back and draw it with ten minutes to go. And now four points in it, but they're not going to go away. They're going to fight to the end. And but what a credit both teams are, and both trainers, to send out their team, Jimmy Barry and David Fitzgerald, with this philosophy. This is the way Hurling should be played. What a game. Anthony Nash knocking it in. Harnett is in there. They're all in there. But it's going to come back out. Final shot was by Lehan. Eventually, the referee saw the foul in there on the Clare defender, and it's going to be a free out. Donald O'Donovan dusting himself down, walking away from a Davy Fitzgerald, looking at the subs bench and thinking of another change. He's already used up three of his possible five subs. Cork have used up four of theirs. Clare by four points here at Croke Park in front of 82,000 people. As you can see, seven minutes remain, and a little under. And Jerry, you mentioned. Donald O'Donovan that I had mentioned earlier he hadn't touched, maybe seen much of him that may be the crucial ball in this game a 50-50 ball in isolated Stephen White inside with Donald O'Donovan he catches and he runs out to the halfway line with the ball and brings it away and shortly after then Clare add on the goal in the point that maybe will win them this all Ireland Park Kelly's free Kenny's under it for Cork breaks it down towards himself collects it but immediately dispossessed here John Connell in there but taking it away there for Cork is Chris Joyce back as far as Conor O'Sullivan that uh, back line of Cork's been under immense pressure for so much of this game. The uh, Clare defenders had their moments when it was quite uneasy for them. Cork kept on pressing forward. And again, Clare come, and they look for chances. And Nicky O'Connell now, who had a hand in the uh, pass that came to Donald O'Donovan for the point that levelled the match back three weeks ago. But right now it's Clare, ahead by four, as they were at half-time, Pat O'Connor up as far as Shane O'Donnell got one point in the second half to below the 3-1 he got in the first 35 minutes leading the court defence of Mary Dance and putting it over it's a dream day for him last year it was Walter Welsh you might remember and Shane O'Donnell today having a day he will never forget three goals and three points yeah and you'd have to say Joe, on very limited possession in the second half and I think the point he got in the second half was so crucial you know I mentioned it in the commentary they hadn't scored for so long and he stopped the rot but what a fantastic game he's had on one of the great defenders from Cork on, on Shane O'Neill 3-3 in the Ireland final it's a day that he'll never forget and God help him for the rest of his life at 19 the pressure that's going to be on him every time he goes out from now on to replicate this and that is going to be his final contribution because Dara Conan's coming on to replace him but just listen to the re reception he is getting as he comes off it was an inspired choice by manager Davy Fitzgerald to give this young man, this talented young hurler, his big break today on the day of the final and how he has responded. Anthony Nash with the puck out. Cork down by five. Is there any possible way back with only four minutes to go of the 70? They collect it in the air through the marvellous Seamus Harnady. Off he goes. Flying through the air, shooting but stopped on the line by Pat Kelly. He remained ice cool and the referee's blown his whistle. And he's giving a free in. Did you see a foul as he was going through that time? Well, uh, no, I don't know. He, brilliant catch, as you said, by Harnett. I was watching what a run through the middle and went for the goal and the goalkeeper, ice cool. We'll have to see it again, but... I just, just on that substitution, Ger, I don't know how he could take off Shane O'Donnell. Scored 3-3, three, three, full run, the young lad. Just watch here. Yeah, a little... No, pull his togs, definitely a free and uh, it's inside the 21 look where he's given the free, back out here the foul was actually inside the 21 it should be a 21 yard free and it's obviously by the time it rises it should be about the 21 but that's beside the point it should be a 21 yard free well this has to go in and the pressure is on Anthony Nash and on JBM once again he's done marvellously well Jimmy Barry to get his team to the final, nobody expected it in early summer 12 players, 12 players on the line again, like, who's going to go for it there's too many players there well, they've decided to bring, it out a couple now. to bring a couple out.
just in case the ball comes back out to one of the incoming forwards. I don't know why they don't put a couple of people nearer the ball. You only have to be 14 yards away. It's 25 or 6 yards out. They've just put Cahal knocked in Cork right in front yeah. of the backs. Clare should have a couple of shot. backs. Clare should have three or four backs there. There you see, Cork with backs now right on the edge of the small rectangle. So it come, if it comes bouncing out, God knows what's going to happen. But Nashville hit it a, a rocket once again. They need this. He's misdirected it, really. And it's gone wide. Harvey with the last touch. It just didn't come up properly for him. <laughs> well, Jerry, it's one of the, Technically, it's difficult to do, to rise the ball that far ahead and keep control, but that didn't come up at all from... Still went in there and just... Ooh, it's hard yeah. to again. And Stays at 4.15 to 2.16. I just... Uh, anything could happen next year. <laughs> We've seen so much over the two games, but you'd have to think at this stage that Clare should be able to hang on in there. Well, can they? That is the... The question is very much their advantage, and two minutes to go, surely it has to be. Nine minutes since Cork last scored. That was when they needed there a moment to go, but it wasn't easy. That's spooned back by Conor O'Sullivan, and this time he's done it once too many times and played it out over his own end line and given away a 65. I think it's the first in the match, and it takes the pressure off Clare. It puts the pressure back on Cork. Time is their enemy, and the Clare fans are ready to celebrate their heroes and they hope they will be doing so inside the next three, four minutes. Ah, yeah, Ger, look, what an all-Ireland final. We thought after the last day we couldn't see anything like it again, but this has surpassed the last day. For sheer, for brilliant hurling, Cork have played so well as well. You, nobody can point a finger at any Cork player today and say they didn't hurl. Every one of them hurled their hearts out. And Marvellous, just, marvellous skills, but great character as well, you know that? Great resilience, great character, yeah. everything you love to see in the game. Colin Ryan to strike and to put this one over the bar. He's got seven points in this final. Six of them have come from freeze. He's put six points between the teams. It's Clare's title, surely, this time. Anthony Nash, two minutes of added time are going to be played, I'm told. So about two and three-quarter minutes to go before the final whistle. And Tony Kelly nips in here. Nocton's after him. Kelly bounces it again. He's did it in the final three weeks ago. Pat Delaney fashion from all those years ago. Here comes Nocton, who tracked back. Cork just living on scraps in the last few minutes. But very, very well from their point of view to get level midway through the second half. But then that Conor McGrath goal in particular, after 62 minutes, that was the one that set Clare up here. They're still going, Cork, still looking for it. And they've got it! Stephen Moylan! Well, it's his third championship goal. He's put three between them, and there's still going to be about the best part of two minutes to go. Absolutely brilliant goal, Joe. What a catch, Pat Cronin, and a finish. The goalie had hardly moved. A brilliant finish by Stephen Moylan. Well, they're probably wondering, are we going to lose this? They're still ahead by three. It's an sure. amazing match. I said in a couple of minutes, well, anything can happen, and it's not over yet. Who's going to win the next ball? The next score is important now. Up it goes there towards John Conlon. Couldn't get to it. There was a foul, McLaughlin, ready to take the free. Referee wants it taken again. There's another uh, sub just in there by Clare, and that is Shane Amori. He becomes their fifth and final one. All eyes now, however, on the free taker. It's got to be Nash who's got to drop it in. As you can see, the first minute has practically elapsed here, so another 60 seconds to go. But then again, I think we said that the last time as well, didn't we? Here comes Nash. Huge one, landing about 13 metres out. Collected by Harnady, looking for space. Fumbled, the clear defenders get around him. Out he comes to the substitute, Sean Amore. This is his only contribution, he's only on a few seconds. And he gets the ball away far enough, 40 seconds to go. Down to the man who was left out, Daryl Conan. They're ahead by three, Claire. Looking to try and put it over the bar, very tight angle. This is, he might get a chance here. He does, he walks it all the way in. Dara Conan. That is amazing. 5.16 to 3.16. Well, you couldn't make this up during your wildest dreams. And Dara Conan showed great composure there. He really had no, you know, he was right not to go for a shot because he would have given a free puck out if he sent it wide and he carried it in and ended up in the back of the net. It's, it's all, all over. over. It's all over. 
Clare are the champions. Davy Fitzgerald has done it. It's taken a replay. It's taken a magnificent match. One of the great finals. And he could scarcely believe it. But he's achieved wonders with this young team. They've come from the bottom of the pack in the last few years to win their first All-Ireland since 1997. A wonderful scene of euphoria that only an All-Ireland hurling final can engender. John Conlon set it all up. The fans have played their part. Joy unconfined for Clare. Bittersweet emotions for the vanquished from Cork. That's Stephen White there who came on as a sub. JB Yamo did his bit to get his team here. How they played, but Clare were the better. Final score, it's Clare 5-16, it's Cork 3-16.